pray all the time. Amen. Amen. Ooh. Lord have mercy. God is in control. Sure is. Devil, you can't have my mind. No way. Devil, you can't have my soul. No. I belong to God. Amen. Amen. You belong to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please turn your Bibles or your phones or whatever apparatus you have to see the word in front of you. We're going to be looking at some scriptures, and I hope that you either write these things down. If you can't find them in time, just listen or write them down. And make sure that you go over them later on, on your own time. Because you know, maybe God didn't, you didn't receive a rainbow word at the time that this message is being broadcast, but you may be able to pick up something down the road that God has specially for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the difference between a, a, a rhema word and a logos word. The logos word is the written word, what you see in front of you. But a rhema word is the word that you, that God actually gives you. Mm -hmm. It gives you. Amen. And that's what you're looking for. Because it's something that you need. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God knows it. Yeah. He wants to give it to you. So in 1 John chapter 2, amen, uh, we're going to be reading the uh, scriptures from, I'm just going to cut it down. We read a response of reading from 12 and 17. But I'm going to just read 15 and 17 to get the whole idea of where we're going. Amen. Amen. And John, 1 John 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world. See that? Mm -hmm. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he or she that doeth the will of God abide forever. So the important thing here is the will of God. Love not the world. Amen. Today's title, Why We Should Hate This Spiritual World System. Why We Should Hate This Spiritual World System. Now we know the word, the word world here means the cosmos. But here we're not talking about the physical world. We're not talking about the material world, but we're talking about the spiritual world. That he's talking about to hate. Amen. God is love. But in some instances that God tells us to and tells us in the all throughout the Proverbs and the Psalms, to love God is to hate evil. Amen. And we have an evil, an evil spiritual system at work on this planet. Amen. But that system is going to pass away. Amen. But those who deal with the will of God is going to provide a Abide forever. They're going to stay. They're going to live forever. Amen? Amen. Now we know this world is beautiful. It's mountains. It's rivers. It's lakes. It's beaches. Amen. The hillsides, the landscapes, the flowers, the animals, the birds. Amen. But these things, this world, we don't follow after. We are we appreciate God's creation. Yes. We appreciate that. But we're talking about the spirit of this world. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So he's talking about here a certain spiritual attitude or experience or a movement. And this movement is actually here today. So this is what he's talking about hating. So in order to Hate it, we must love God to recognize what we hate. Amen? Amen? You and I know that we are living in the last days. These are the last days. We are actually, actually living in Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, and you can write this down, you know, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21 says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. That's Romans 1, 20, 21. Neither were thankful, but because, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. 
professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Mm -hmm. It says there in verse uh, 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped the serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this God, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for their own women to change the natural use into, into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of a woman, burning their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving, amen, receiving, praise God, the recompense of their own error, which was me. But here's the sad part. It says here in verse 29, being, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiting, haters of God, despisers of proud, boasters, inventors, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Now watch this. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, and placeable, unmerciful. Who knowing, here's the sad part, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Mm. Let me tell you something. Don't be surprised that the world won't pay you no more. Don't be surprised when you lift up Jesus, they're going to tell you to get out their face. Don't, don't, even, because don't be surprised if the world hate you. Mm. The Bible says it hated, Jesus said it hated me before it hated you. I called you out from the world. That's the church, the called out ones. So don't be surprised that when you live your life as a believer, that everybody's going to fall down and, 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 and want to say, well, how can I live this way? See, the majority of this world loves darkness. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 19, men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. See, their deeds are evil. Praise God. You know, many I've experienced think that I preach too many doomsday messages. I heard that from a couple people. Mm -hmm. And it didn't startle me. It was just that it wasn't ready for the truth. So everybody don't want the truth. They don't want the truth. They'd rather you lie to them. Amen? They say your messages seem to be too negative. I believe my messages are both optimistic and sometimes pessimistic. Let me explain. Amen? An optimist is a person who tends to be hopeful and confident about the future. Amen? Someone who expects a good outcome. Pessimist is someone who observes mainly the negative aspects of everything around them, which is better. Amen? An optimist tends to uh, uh, fare better in life than a pessimist does. So what do you call a person who is both an optimist and a pessimist? A realist. Jesus was a realist. He didn't back down. He told you what the real fact was. When they caught that woman in the very act of adultery, he said, if anybody ain't sin, cast the first stone. He said, everybody has sinned. You see? They wanted him to, to, to destroy that woman because she was caught in the very act. A realtor, uh, listen, is a, accepts a situation as it is and is prepared to deal with it accordingly. A realtor's view, they view the world, its problems, and its future. Jesus was a realtor. He says in John 16, 33, I'm going to be mixing the King James uh, uh, interpretation and the Amplified Bible interpretation together. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace in the world. See, in him. 
So you ain't in him, you ain't going to have peace. Because he's the prince of peace. Right? Then he says, in the world you shall have tribulation. You're going to have it. You're going to have frustrations. Amen? You're going to have, you're going to have distress and you're going to suffer in this world. So don't think that when you come to Christ, everything is going to be smooth. Amen. So you're thinking wrong right then. And you're thinking wrong that the world is going to, to, to feel sorry for you. This world system, this spiritual world system is demonic and it's run by their king. Right. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But he says, be of good cheer. This is where he's a realist. He says, I'm telling you what, the, what it is, how it is out here in this world. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, we overcome the world when we in Christ. Greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. We overcome the world. He says, I have overcome the world. I have deprived the world of its power over you. Amen. The world does have a power. It has a lust a, a power. Mm -hmm. A flesh power. Mm -hmm. Amen? A, a pride power. Mm -hmm. These things start getting in your psyche, man, and you become just like the world. But he said, if you love these things, the love of the Father is not going to be in you. Amen? Praise God. Watch this. If we love the Lord, then the Lord must hate something. And Psalms 119, verse 104 says, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate everything, everything that is false. <clears throat> Amen? Mm -hmm. And Psalms 119, 163, he says, I hate lies, but thy law do I love. Amen. And Psalms 97.10, it says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. So when the Bible tells us, love not the world, he's talking about the world system. Amen. Amen. Not the creation, but the world system. The first thing Jesus said to his disciples when they asked him on the Mount of Olives in Matthew chapter 24, in verse 3 they asked him, when is, when is the sign of the end? When is the end of the world, the end of the age? When is it coming to an end? The first thing he said to them in verse 4 was, in Matthew 24, 4, he says, let no man deceive you. Amen. Meaning, man is going to deceive you. <laughs> Amen. You're going to be this. How many, how many, listen, how many times somebody told you, I love you? <laughs> you found out it wasn't true. You might love some things about me. You might love what I do for you, but you didn't love me the way you treat me. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he's saying, they're going to deceive you. It's going to be many that's going to come in my name saying they are the Christ. And they're going to deceive many. He tells us throughout the scriptures, there's many false prophets out here. So it's going to be people who are going to deceive you. So we must be individuals who understand and receive from the Spirit of God when to let us know and give us discernment when somebody's lying to us. Amen. You got to have it. You don't have it, guess what? You're going to be deceived. <laughs> and it's going to be in the church. We read it last week in that 2 Timothy chapter 4, remember when it says, mm -hmm. he says, preach the word, in season, out of season. It's going to come a time when they're going to people have itching ears. They ain't, going to, they ain't going to want sound doctrine. They're not going to want this. No. They want to lie. Tell me that I'm good, but I know I ain't no good. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we got to understand and allow God's spirit to lead us. Listen, Jesus told Pilate when he stood before him, Jesus says, my kingdom, watch this, is not of this world. Amen. He said, it's not of this world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that's why I said, write these things down. You can't get to them fast in with your own eyes. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Satan is the god of this world. And he has, listen, he has blinded the minds of them which believe not. See, all we're doing now is, what do we do as believers? That's right. We believe. We believe. Amen. He said, He's blinded the minds of them which believe. Other words, 
As a man thinks, so is he. Now we know when we came to Christ, our thinking had to change. Which affects our attitude, which affects our behavior. Because once we find out what the Word of God has commanded and commands us to do, we got to change our evil ways. Amen. Amen. Come from among them and be ye separate. If you will call by my name, amen, he says, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways, and then you will hear from heaven. Amen? amen. amen. So, it's an interesting verse in John chapter 15, if you can turn there. Uh, if not, just write it down in your notes. John 15, 18, Jesus in 19 told his disciples this. Powerful uh, passage of scripture, John 15, uh, 18 and 19, he says, If the world hate you, what, right? Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. See, we are followers of Christ. The world's going to hate you. Because we have something they don't have. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Which, which guides us and leads us into all truth. It, it directs and guides us into the paths of righteousness. But see, I said earlier in that John chapter 3, verse 19, men love darkness when they love light because their deeds are evil. So since we are, we have, it's been a change on the inside of us. We are on a whole new different road. We don't serve this world system. Listen, every kingdom has a king. Amen. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, they call it the Lord's Prayer, and that Matthew 6, 9, it starts, I believe it says, Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name, listen, how be thy name, thy kingdom come. So, when he came, there was a kingdom already set up. And that was Satan's kingdom because Satan is the king of this world system. So he told Pilate, my kingdom ain't of this world. So don't be surprised when the world don't want to hold your hand and say, oh, I believe this Jesus too. You see? See, we don't know who is on the list to come into the Lord's kingdom. Our job is to preach the gospel throughout the whole world. And then the end is going to come. That's actually Matthew 24, 14. Once the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, that's when the end is coming. That's when Christ is going to return. Amen. When that last person is saved. Amen. Praise God. So all we got to do is lift them up. Look at John 17, uh, uh, 14. This scripture says this. Jesus says, I have given them thy word. He's talking to the Father. I have given them thy word. John 17, 14. And the world hated them because they are not of the world. Even, I, even as I am not of the world. You see? Now, he wouldn't tell us love not the world if he didn't mean it. Because if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. See, if we're the called out ones, and we are, as a church. We come from among them. We don't isolate ourselves from them, but we separate ourselves from what they do, how they act, and how they behave. Because we have a new nature. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, In Christ you are a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, new things come. So since you've been saved, when you hear the word of God, because Jesus said in John 15, earlier in that John 15, he says, the words that I speak clean you. So more and more you keep hearing his word, the more and more it's cleaning you. It's giving you a better understanding, a clear view of the way, the way God wants you to walk, the way he wants you to live. Amen? And your, your trust level has been going up because you find it out. In your walk, through your circumstances, through your trials and tribulations, you're finding out, don't nobody do you like Jesus. Nobody. He's a mighty good God, amen? 
So you, it, it encourages you to keep on keeping on. You keep on seeking them. You'll find them. You keep on knocking. The door is going to come open. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, praise God. Amen. Listen. Hey. So to get through this world, we have to have a different mindset. We gotta have a different mindset. Amen. If the Holy Spirit is not leading you, and you have grieved or saddened Him because you are disobedient or you have been disobedient, you will be deceived. You're going to be deceived. He's here to lead us and guide us. When Jesus was in the, uh, uh, the garden, I mean, well, He was in the wilderness in Matthew four and Luke chapter four. And I think it's a Luke, a Luke's four account. It says, Jesus was led up in the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. So the wilderness would be this world system. So in other words, he just didn't get up and go. He was led by the Spirit. See, some of us, when we come out of our house in the morning, we just get up and go. We don't, we, our mind is bogged down of what we got to do in that day. A lot of us don't get up and, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. So when we run across that this system, it throws us off. It disappoints us. It frustrates us. But if we come to God first, and we seek Him first, amen, we shouldn't be surprised if things are going to confront us. Because He didn't told us, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have frustration. But be, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have deprived the world of its power over you. So God knows all about it. we got to check into him first. Seek ye first the kingdom. Amen? Amen? Seek ye first the kingdom. Listen, Satan is more concerned about the end of days more than man is. Amen. You know, man is going around acting like he got forever. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. We know and by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God that times is different. Mm -hmm. Times is different. People are off the hook. Mm -hmm. And they've been off the hook. Mm -hmm. They ain't been hanging on and it fell off a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, if you, we can go on and on in that situation. In that example. But man is getting so far away from just morally a uh, 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 standard of living that he is so confused that he don't know who he is yeah. or what he is. <laughs> I used to tell people, I had to tell doctors now when a child is born, don't the doctor ought not to say, it's a boy and a girl or a girl. He ought to say, I don't know, let them find out. <laughs> you see? Man, that's getting so far away from the truth, man. Amen? But we ought to stay on the straight and narrow because that's a very, that's a, that's a narrow road. The Bible says, brought us away in destruction, and there's many on that road. But there's a narrow road, and only few actually find that road. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen. Satan knows he has a very short period of time. That's right. Because he knows this world is going to pass away. He knows it. Mm -hmm. So he's trying everything he can in to deceive people. He wants to deceive a God's creation man. He wants to deceive him because he don't want to be, he don't want to go to the lake of fire by himself. He wants to take as many as people as possible. Amen. He wants his, his his greatest lie is you got time. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it, just do it tomorrow. Yeah. See, that's his greatest lie. Yeah. But see, we don't know the day and the hour when we when we or we take our last breath. Amen. <laughs> we don't know, man. That's one thing you don't play with. We got all these plans and stuff that we want to do in our lives, but the Lord better be a part of them. Amen. Amen. He better be a part of them. Amen. Amen. He knows he's headed for the lake of fire. Amen. The Bible tells us he's the father of lies. Amen. Praise God. I want you to look at um, look at uh, uh, John chapter eight. We're in John 17. Let's go back a little bit to try to keep you guys in the vicinity here. Amen. John chapter 8. Look at 42 to 48. We're going to look at these verses. Because God has created a, a, a beautiful creation in this world. I mean, you look at the waterfall and you see how, uh, you know, when you go out and you see a nice scenery on the beach, 
you hear the birds twerping and it's like you have a beautiful sunset mm -hmm. or a sunrise. This is all God. So his creation was affected by the spiritual system. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, uh, He quickened us. He made us alive. Because at one time, we was under the govern of the prince of the power of the air who now works in the children of disobedience. Right. So we are children of obedience. We obey God. Remember John 14, 21, it says, Those who love me or keep my commandments, these are the ones who obey me. And those who obey me, he said, Guys, I'm going to manifest myself under them. Amen. So when you're going through a problem in your life, he's going to show up because you've been obedient to him. He's going to get you out of that trouble. Paul said so many times, all the things he experienced in his life, God delivered him out of them all. Amen. Now who don't want that? Amen. When you're being attacked mentally or physically or spiritually, don't you want, to, don't you want relief? Amen. Don't you want deliverance? Amen. God is a deliverer. Amen. Amen? You know, sometimes we have to, we said earlier, you got to speak the word yourself. Out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speak, we said earlier, uh, before we start the service, we're talking about when you when you you believe your voice more than you believe anybody else's voice. Before you make a decision, amen, you gotta hear yourself say, okay, I'm coming. But if I say, let's go jump off the bridge, you say, wait a minute. That ain't something I want to do. So you gotta analyze, you gotta discern, amen. So when it's go there's many voices out here. So when you hear stuff, amen, you gotta be able to allow the Holy Spirit to answer the door of your mind. See, remember we always say, I've said, been saying for years, you can't help what knocks on the door of your mind. But you ought to, you ought to help what you let in. Amen. If you let fear in, it's going to overtake you. Because he didn't give us that spirit of fear. Amen? So look here in John 8, 42. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he's, you talk about, he's telling like it is, man. I can just tell he's just tired of it. He said, we're going to get to the point here. So y'all think I'm blind, but I'm letting you know. He says here, in that verse 42, he says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. He said, you are your father the devil. Now, you're talking about a blow upside the head. Now, when you're trying to witness to somebody and they ain't want to hear it, don't say you are your father the devil. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That's not what he's saying here. You know, if you plant the seed, you just took the seed right away. And you, if you water it, you just, you, you just, you just dried it up. It was the Lord who gave the increase. That's right. If a person rejects your testimony and they reject your love for reaching out to them because you want to you want to pour them from the flame and you want to have compassion for them, don't get upset because they know not what they do. Amen. You just got to say, okay, Lord, have mercy on them and move on. Mm -hmm. But here he says here, you are your father the devil in the lust, verse 44, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and, a, and abode not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of, his, of it. Because, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Watch this. Which of you convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Is the verse. He that is of God hears God's words. Ye therefore hear them not. Because you are not of God. You are not of God. So everybody, everybody said they believe Jesus. Everybody say, I was baptized, you know, and make it up. I've been saved on so and so day. But if your life indicates, amen. Listen, if it indicates that you're not following his commands, you ain't of him. Because evidently you don't hear him. He said there, he that's of God hears God's words. So when you hear something, you, you do it. 
you respond to it. If you hear him not, because you are not of God. See, the main thing is make sure you are of God. The way you do that, you trust him, believe him, you follow his word, you allow him to perform open heart surgery on you. You allow him to give you a new viewpoint, a new, a new insight of your surroundings in your life, mainly your life, because we're supposed to examine ourselves first before we start looking at everybody else. It's easy to look at you and look at you, but God wants us to turn that finger around and look at ourselves. Am I walking right? Am I trusting God? Am I believing God? If some of these situations in my life and these problems is what I caused because somewhere I got off track and I started puffing myself up, I started doing my own thing, I didn't seek the kingdom, I started seeking my kingdom. So we talked about a couple weeks ago, I don't know, it was last week or week four, you reap what you sow. Amen. That's the golden principle, man. A lot of us stuff, and we in, we in messes right now because we put ourselves there. But we can get out of it. Praise God. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? Amen. John 1, 29 says this. John the Baptist said this. He says, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. You and I know Jesus died for our sins. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, The ways of the sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So, sin is the thing that when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, at that time, the, the, the creation was for man. Amen? We're supposed to rule over the land. But Satan came in and deceived them. And at that point, the lease was held, handed over to Satan. So he became the God of this world. Amen? But he has been defeated. The only way we know that is through a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you know, allowing us to see this world for what it is, this world system. It's going to hate you because they hated Christ first. We ought not to, he said, that it, it's, the, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These three can and will destroy you. Those same things, eyes, lust of the flesh, and a part of life, is the same thing what happened to Eve in the garden. She saw that the apple was good. And her flesh reached out for it, and then she began to see what it can do for her. Her pride got swelled up. And I could be wise, because she believed the lie and the enemy of the serpent. And what happened? The whole human race failed. And we were born in the sin. But God made it possible for us to, to, to have a Savior. Amen. He left his throne in heaven. He came here in the form of flesh. They called him Jesus. Which means he's going to save. He's a Savior. He's the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. So he's the Savior, anointed one. And he came to deliver his people from their sins. That's why it says there, Behold the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. Amen. Now go to 1 John chapter 4. We getting this, y'all? Amen. 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 1 John chapter 4. Look at verse 1. We there say amen. amen. Beloved, believe not every spirit. See? We're dealing with spirits out here, y'all. It ain't flesh and blood. But try the spirits. That word try there means test. You can't trust the you can't test the spirits if you don't have the Holy Spirit. I say it again. You can't test the spirits out here. There's a lot of them out here if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives you discernment. You couldn't have been saved without the Holy Spirit, first of all, allowing you to give you revelation to see that you need to be saved. Amen? So he says, Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out to the world. So they're out here. They're in this world, y'all. Watch this. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. This is how you know the Spirit of God. 
every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God. What's he saying there? That if you don't believe that Jesus is God, and he came in the flesh, you ain't of God. Mm. Right. Period. Well, he can't be God. He can't be God. You know what I mean? Well, why can't he? He said, when you see, he told Philip, when you see me, you see the Father. In John chapter 10, verse 30, he says, me and my Father are one. And when in that same chapter, uh, chapter 10, when the Jews was going to stone him, amen, and for the miracles that he'd done, he said, why you stone me for that? No, we stone you because you, being a man, say that you are God. So we stone you for blasphemy. So Jesus is God in the flesh. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God, listen, was manifested in the flesh. Who was that? Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, God was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And we beheld His glory. So, he says, he was, he was manifested in the flesh, He was priest among the Gentiles. Amen. He was believed on in the world. Amen. He was caught up. So listen, think about it. He was seen of angels. He was believed on in the world. And that's what we're doing. We're believing. And see, by believing Him, He's given us insight of what this is really all about out here. That way we used to live, we don't live no more. Because it, it, was, it was a dead end. It brought destruction. Because we was reaping to our flesh. And so when we reap to our flesh, we reap what? Destruction. Mm -hmm. When we reap to the Spirit, we reap life everlasting. Amen? I mean, let's think about it, y'all. There's been a great change in y'all's life, man. Go back 10 years ago. Yes. Oh, we don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Talk about a wretch undone. Mm -hmm. Woo! But thank God we can look back and see how far we've come. And see how far we got to go. Amen? Because of God's Word, because of God's Spirit, because of God's people, and because of the love for one another, amen, in the household of faith, we have, you know, we know, we, we experience that peace. We experience that comfort. We have, you know, that, 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 the fear that had us so wrapped up in nonsense, amen, is gone. Because God has entered in. He's showing us, I love you. you. If you love me, amen, I love you first. But show me that you love me. Obey me and trust me. And watch me work out everything in your life. Watch this. Let me finish reading this here. It says, verse 3. Now watch how many times he said the world. Watch this. He says in verse 3, 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confessed not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where have ye have been you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. You see that? And it, this is the world system. He's here in this world, right? You are God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Praise God. Watch five. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Ye are of God, he that knoweth God hears us, and he that is not of God hears us not. Whereby know ye the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's what we deal with every day, y'all. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Where are we follow? If we follow the spirit of error, we're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. Things are going to happen to us. But we have the spirit of, we follow the spirit of truth. He's going to lead us into all truth. Amen? Amen. Are we here? Yeah. Now here's a powerful verse. I want you all to see it with your own eyes. That's James chapter 1. So go back a couple books here. Uh -huh. You've got 2 Peter and 1 Peter. Then you got James. And you're going to go to James chapter 1. You're going to look at verse 27. Amen? And I want to explain this verse when we get over here. Because it's so important. You know, a lot of people say they're religious. You know, and how do you, what is a religious person? 
you know. Well, you know, I go to church, I pay my tithe, and I'm done. That ain't, that, that don't mean nothing. Nope. That don't mean anything. A person who understands religion, religion, first of all, is man-made. But a person who has religious ways on attitude is a person who actually follows God. Their life has changed in their behavior, in their conduct. But here, when he says here, in that verse 27 of James chapter 1, he says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Now he's going to explain to us what it's all about. Y'all. This is the real deal right here. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And watch this. And to keep himself or herself unspotted from the world. So don't say you believe in Christ and you're running with the world. Don't, believe, don't say you love God and the world can't tell you, can't tell the difference. They, well, you know, you ain't no different from what I'm doing. You're doing the things that the world is doing? Come on, somebody. And the reason why, you know, we, we, we fall back into sin, we backslide. But one of the reasons is Satan has spent so much time in each and every one of us to have us, he, throw, he, cast, he throws imaginations at us. He throws things at us to try to us figure it out. But that's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, cast down imaginations. And every, listen, and every high thing, listen, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, indicating that we've got to know God because there's been some high things that we believed, which was an imagination, but we believed it because it exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So since Satan deceived us over here, and we're not now receiving the knowledge of God, we have backslidden from God, amen. We've been doing our own thing. So these things have proceeded above the knowledge of God. And now we believe in an imagination. I believe the temptation says, just my imagination, what? Running away from me. We don't want that. He says, cast down imaginations and every high thing, listen, to the obedience of Christ and bring it to captivity. Listen, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that's that discernment part of us. All right, when Jesus said in John, Matthew chapter 6, he says, take no thought what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to eat. He said, don't, don't take no thought. Seek ye first the kingdom. So remember, as a man thinks, so is he. So that's why we gotta have a, our, uh, we got to have a whole new different mindset. Praise God. The, script, the scripture just came to me. God is so good. Romans 12. Romans 12. Please look at it right quick. Romans 12. Oh, this is going to get you. Amen. We heard it so many times, but it's going to be suitable for this message right now. Romans 12. Mm, mm, mm. God's word is good, y'all. Good. He says here, watch this. He says in 2. And don't be conformed. Conform means superficial customs and values. Don't be conformed, listen, to what? This world. I mean, you hear people say, well, this is the latest fashion. You see some of the way these people dress now? Half of that now be hanging out? Come on, somebody. You see some of these award shows? This is the world now. Half nude. This is the world. He said, don't be conformed to that. It would be awful. Like, somebody came in here with one of them outfits on. We would look at them like, what is going on? Come on. Would you? I would. Matter of fact, I would address it. First of all, I'm going to pray for you. Because I don't know what happened. But you need to put some clothes on. Amen. 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 He says, listen, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
There's that mindset again. I mean, we, we probably say, renew your mind every week, huh? You know why? Because you got to renew it every week. you got to renew it every day. Why? Because there's thoughts. There's thoughts coming at us. The prince of the power of the air. Satan is throwing thoughts at us, man. He's throwing suggestions at us. He's throwing lies at us. And we gotta be able to, we gotta be able to detect these things, man. This is the battle that they're talking about. This is the, the Bible says, I believe, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Praise God. Oh, just as in the days of, of oh, let me, let me see this. Let me, let me read it. I don't want to, this Matthew, praise God, 11. So you can't sit around. You gotta, we gotta fight. Yep. This is a spiritual battle. Devil, you can't have my mind. Devil, you can't have my soul. Amen? Look at Matthew 11. Look at verse 12. Powerful. Mm. He says here, Amen. I'm getting used to this Bible, y'all. Pages are sticking together. I'm going to break it loose pretty soon here. Look at verse 12. says, And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, suffers violence. See, the kingdom, Satan don't want you to get a hold of the kingdom. Because once you get a hold of the kingdom, then his kingdom has come. Then his will is going to be done. He don't want his will to be done. So he says, listen, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. That's why he fights against you. That's why he don't want you to read your word. That's why he don't want you to follow him. That's why he wants you to debate, should I go to church today? Mm -hmm. he, he, that's why he asks you, should I pray? Mm -hmm. That's why he wants you to give up. Because it's suffering violence. See? These thoughts can come at you so strong that you just want to give up. Yep. But he says, listen. He says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Other words, uh-uh, it's on. Mm -hmm. Devil, you can't have my mind. You can't have my soul, because I belong to God. This is this is every day how we gotta treat everything. Yeah. You gotta hear the word of God. It's something about hearing the word of God that cleans you up, straighten you out. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Yes. I, I give you a little insight of what's going on in my life. We're doing some things at the house that kind of started back when I finished my mom's house. My wife said, okay, it's time now to do a honey-do list. And this honey-do list is becoming so long, it's almost driving me crazy. And um, it's, it's uh, we'll be doing some things in, our, in, in my house. Everything is about. Started back in April, okay? And I'm tired. But anyway, um, I didn't have too, but I haven't been having too much time for my usual usual schedule because it's you know that 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 list been long and I want to get done. I don't want to get things done, you know, and that's how I am. I just say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, so I do it. So, long story short, I've noticed that I'll, I'll be coming stale. What I mean stale? I was becoming stale in my time with God. Because I was so physically exhausted, you know, doing this over here. And there's nothing wrong with it, but I had, to, I had to have some balance. And I would get to the point where I was, you know, lacking in some of my reading. Mm. Come on. And I noticed how I was feeling. I, it was like the monkey on my back. And I, I wanted them off. Mm -hmm. And it hit me the other day like, you know what? That's it tricked me, man. He had me focusing on something that is going to pass away anyway. You see? You, you, we should be focused on the things of God. we got to have a balance in this life, y'all. we got to have a balance. Don't get to the point where you wear yourself out so much where you ain't no earthly good. Mm. You see? you got to have a balance in your life. we got to set aside time for God every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, Listen, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. Yes. Now, I don't think none of us missing no meals in here. 
If we miss a meal, we're going to make sure we make up for it. Come on. What happens when it's lunchtime, y'all? I don't care who you're talking to. What kind of conversation it is. You hear him, but you're saying, you know what? You're thinking, what, what do I want today? Yeah, I hear you, but uh, should I get this over here? You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so this is what we ought to have the same attitude toward God. Amen? Same attitude. Now here, let me finish reading that verse. And that, uh, I don't know if I read it. And be ye transformed by renewing your mind. Uh, why? Because you, but you, once your mind is transformed and you're renewed, you know God's will for your life. Amen? Now let's close with this. A couple things I want to close with. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Are we here? Amen. Now here's the beautiful gospel in a nutshell. Right here. Second Corinthians 5. Look at verse 21. For he, God, he is God. For he hath made him, Jesus. For God hath made Jesus, listen, to be sin for us. Right? who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So in other words, He became sin for us because the way of sin was death. So He took the sins of the whole world upon Himself, man. My sin and your sin. So when God looks at us now, He sees the blood of His Son. Amen. He, we're no longer guilty. We are now, we have been justified. We have been made right by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So, that's why when he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Listen, for whosoever believe should have everlasting life. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why when you come week after week and you hear the gospel, amen. You're, 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 you're hearing things and you're hearing and you're believing a truth that agrees with you, your inner man. And it begins to cleanse you and you begin to grow. You begin, you, you be, uh, your discernment is keener now. Y'all hear me? It's keener now. You become sharp now. I hear some of y'all's conversation when I'm talking to you or when you're testifying that I can see the growth, I hear the growth. You see, you can hear it. You can hear the struggles, but you can hear uh, the realness to sin. You saying, "Okay, it's a problem, but God's going to fix it." Amen. That's powerful. Because at one time, our testimonies were just moanings. Yeah. It wasn't no test. It was moanings, man. <laughs> oh, what was me? Yeah. Like, come on, somebody. Yeah. Now, hearing the word of God, you're growing. Yeah. You know, you 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 understand that. We must do much tribulation. Amen. Joe, you always say it all the time. You said it again this, this morning, your testimony. You know, I'm going through stuff. I'm suffering. I just, hey, that's part of the game, baby. WMTM. That's right. That's part of who we are. Amen. If nothing may happen, you ain't going through nothing, I think I would check if, I would, if my name was in the book. Amen. 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 So wait a minute now. Amen. Is my name in the book? I mean... I don't understand you Christians. Y'all talk about this. I'm not. I'm confessing I'm a Christian. And I never have any problems. Uh-oh. Wow. Those who suffer with him will reign with him. Amen. Though Jesus, Hebrews 5, 8, though Jesus was a son, amen, he learned obedience to the things that he suffered. Hallelujah. Amen. He learned obedience to the things that he suffered. So this is part of of who we are. Christ suffered, we're going to suffer. Yeah. But see, our, our, this is the good part. Our suffering is just for a little while. Yeah. Our, I can't compare a person who rejects Christ. How long do you think their suffering is going to be? Forever! Yeah. Man, I just suffered over some things in my life, and they, they long gone now. Got through them. But when you don't know Christ, when you don't accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior, amen, you're talking about suffering, Oh my goodness. Amen. It's forever. Amen. That ain't cool. No, no. That's not cool. No. Oh God, listen. In verse John 2, 2. And Jesus, he is our propitiation for our sins. 
and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. See, he didn't just die for our sins alone. In other words, appreciation means uh, uh, he averted the wrath of God because the penalty of, of death was sin. So Jesus was a, he was a substitute for our sins. And not only ours, but for the whole world. See, man don't, man don't got to die and go to hell. Just believe the gospel. That's why it's so important that we got to lift up the, remember the woman's song, Helen Baylor, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? And that's what we got to do in our own life. We, sometimes we got to talk to ourselves the word. We do. Because we believe ourselves, we don't believe anybody else. Sometimes you got to read out loud. You got to hear yourself. Amen? And you start believing it, man. We, gotta, we have to change our mindset. We got to change it. Amen? Amen? Remember, we said a couple of weeks ago the acronym for, for the Bible? Remember? Yeah. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Powerful, man. These is his basic instructions because we leave in this earth. Ain't none of y'all been to a funeral a year ago and then you said, oh, I seen them down at the mall. And they was at the, no. Did you do that question where you at? <laughs> I think they made a movie like that, didn't they? What's the name of that movie? Come on, somebody. In that movie, Six Sense. The whole time, this guy thought he was a, but he was a doctor. But the boy said, "I see dead people," and he, it was him. <laughs> Praise God, Amen. <laughs> wow, wow. Listen, God is good, y'all. Watch this. The Bible says, "The pure in heart shall so see God." You be serious about this thing, y'all. You be serious about this. Look, nobody knows when Christ will return. If he comes back in 20 years and you die tonight, he came back for you. Why? Because whatever condition you were in when you died, saved or not saved, if you died in Christ, you're going to rise first. But if you don't die in Christ, you're going to get raised up in the second resurrection. And it says, woe to those who missed the first one. Mm. You don't want the second one, baby. It ain't, it ain't good. It's not good. No, Listen, no. I have decided personally not to go to hell. I mean, seriously. Yes. You know, you, you realize how hot it's been lately? <laughs> huh? Come on, man. Amen. You quickly trying to find some air, right? But in hell, they said you can't even breathe. It's almost like, mm. no, I, I know that was not created for us. I'm not gonna allow the devil to deceive me no more. I'm gonna be on my P's and Q's. I'm gonna allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. I'm not gonna lean on my own understanding. Amen. I'm gonna trust in God. Amen. That's what we gotta do. That's what you take the vial and take it by force. Matthew 11:12. The, the, the kingdom is going to suffer violence. Satan don't want you to do good. He don't want you to follow God. Nope. That's why we have these, these, listen, that's why we have these relapses. What's, what's that mean? What do I mean? That's when we get to the point you can't take it no more. God help! He said, that's exactly what I've been waiting for. We've been gone all, all, all this time doing our own thing. But see, when you belong to God, we got enough to to say, help, I'm sorry, I repent. That's beautiful. Some people don't have that. They don't have it, man. Thank God when you're going through stuff, you can say, Lord, forgive me. And then the peace of God will pass up all understanding, guard your hearts and the minds and your thoughts through Christ Jesus your Lord. And you feel so much better about things. Man, you, man taste and see that the Lord is good. Man. I'm still tasting. I, you know what? I still want more. Amen. I want more. Because he's allowed me to see things in my family, my loved ones, people around me. He's allowed me to see what the problem is. And not where I become judgmental, but he gives, he gives me a better insight what to pray for. Because mm -hmm. like I said, oh, you can't tell somebody like Jesus said to the Pharisees. Remember he said, he said, you are the fallen devil. Don't do that. When you try to win somebody over to Christ, don't tell them that. Get have wisdom and say, God have mercy on them. Because they know not what they do. Praise yeah. God. Mm -hmm. 
Watch this. Mm. Praise God. We gotta decide to serve God, y'all. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that each and every day we should be reaching out that your kingdom will come. You said your kingdom is not of this world. Amen. Amen. But Lord, you want us to seek after your kingdom. And when your kingdom does come, that means you rule and you reign. There's going to be peace. There's going to be understanding. Yes, there's going to be heartache and frustrations. But you have overcome the world. You have deprived the world of its power over us. This is a, we have a happy ending when you serve Christ. We can tell the devil, devil, you can't have my mind. You can't have my soul. My life belongs to the Lord. I trust in him and him alone. I don't trust in myself, but I trust in the Lord. Father, have mercy on us today as we receive your word. And let us all continue to seek you, to, to, to be pure in heart, to hunger after righteousness. You said we shall be filled. Bless that soul that is near as hell. Claim the backslider. It may be someone who does not know Jesus and a part of your sins. Father, send your revelation power from your spirit to let them know that they can be saved. Let them know that they need to be saved. Let it be real. Let it be authentic. Because you are God of truth. And you are God who can not lie. So we trust in you. We believe in you. Have mercy on our souls. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. 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 amen.